Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we covered the solution of single degree of freedom system in free vibration considering the damping of the system. We assume that the damping coefficient is greater than critical damping coefficient. In other words, we assume that the damping ratio, namely psi, is greater than 1. And when psi is going to be 1, the system is critically damped. In engineering, for example, in civil engineering or mechanical engineering, typically this value is less than 1. It means that the KSI is typically uh, for civil engineering something around 5%, and for mechanical engineering it can be up to 40-50%. In either case, it would be less than 1. As a result, the solution will be completely different. In civil engineering in structures, this value comes from the uh, friction between the joints and the ability of the structure to release or to resist the motion of the system. Let's have a look how the equations should be solved. For the characteristic equation that we had, our s squared plus 2 psi omega r plus omega s squared equals to 0, the solution was minus psi omega plus minus omega s squared root of psi s squared minus 1. Now, if psi is less than 1, then this value it is called underdamped system, and then psi s squared minus 1 is a negative value. As a result, we can write it down in the format of complex number. So it should, it should be minus psi omega plus minus omega s squared root of minus 1 times 1 minus psi s squared. 1 minus psi s squared is uh, positive as far as psi is less than 1 and s squared root of minus 1 is pi. So it will be psi omega plus minus i omega s square root of 1 minus psi s square. Now here we have the real part and also the imaginary part of this complex number, the real one and imaginary. The solution for this case will be e power by minus psi omega t a cosinus omega times s square root minus 1 minus psi s square t plus b sinus omega omega times s square root of 1 minus psi power by 2 is called omega d consequently we can write down the solution with omega d times t now we need to make the first derivative to apply the initial condition u dot t will be minus psi omega e power by minus psi omega t plus e power by minus psi omega t minus omega d a sinus omega dt. And now we can easily apply the initial condition. u at e equals 0 is going to be u0. As a result, it will be 1 times a plus 0 equals to u0. And then we can find out a, which is u0. And then u dot at t equals 0 minus psi omega a plus 1 times omega d times b. And from here we can find out u dot 0 plus psi omega a is u0 divided by omega d. And easily we can write down our solution u t will be e over by minus k psi omega t u0 cosinus omega dt plus u dot 0 plus psi omega u0 divided by omega d times sinus omega dt. Now we can sketch this equation to see how it looks like in the response or solution. Now it's better if we change the S screen and go through MATCAD. Here is the previous um, solution that we had. Let's copy some of those information from here and write it in a new case. This time we are going to use, this value is negative as far as we are going to use psi um, less than 1. So I have to write it down this way and this equation will be changed. So it instead of hyperbolic it will be this value. And if we bring out our equation 
u0 cosinus omega d times t plus u dot psi omega u0 omega d and sinus should be sinus so it was over damped i can just use u and to compare how it affects we can bring this critical solution as well and now we can have our plots u as a function of t and this time instead of reader value of si we can go with let's go with 0.5 millimeter also to compare we can have this function as well in millimeter this is the value of being critical i change the color as an index so here we can see that with the value of 0.5 it starts to have one cycle and after that it starts to decay the energy or dissipate the energy we can go forward with a lower value of damping ratio in millimeter now we can see how it looks like so 0.1 is 10 percent in reality we are dealing with something around five percent let's sketch that one as well i change the color here and we can go with five percent in millimeter and the color i can use green to see how it affects so the smaller value of damping ratio would result in uh, more time to dissipate the total energy something that that is important if i just delete these functions related to high value of damping ratio here you can see that the graphs are with the same period if you look at this from this point up to the other point they are crossing the horizontal line or u is zero with the same value let's change it to the other value for example 0 0.15 you can see that the period is constant the only matter is with higher value of damping ratio the decay of the energy occurs faster that's that's the main point and the value or the period between these two is td which is 2 pi divided by omega d let's have a look on this uh, 2 times p 2 times pi divided by omega d of 0 0.05 the value is 0 0.89 seconds now let's go with 0 0.1 0 0.89 let's go with 0 0.15 0 0.899 you can see that the value is almost the same for different values of ksi and here also you can notice from the graph that they are happening with the same period this is very useful for practical calculation of, of uh, KSI of any structure. Uh, motion is given to a structure and the free vibration is studied and between two peak points or three points you can calculate the damping coefficient or damping ratio. Well, that's uh, how it looks like in the calculation. It would be easier if I continue with the same concept for one good example or two examples in the next video, just to keep the videos as short as possible. We will continue with the examples of this topic in the next video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.